Sige. So, good afternoon. Good afternoon, classmate Kate and to all our classmates. So, I'm tasked to um, just give a uh, short lecture. Short, no? Sinabihan ako ni Sir Rod dito na 20 minutes. Kaya, dami kong in-skip na slide. Sige. Short lecture about STD. Actually, sexually transmitted disease or sexually transmitted in infection is a broad topic. Okay? So, maraming covered na diseases. But I'll try to um, just emphasize those essential diseases and important um, aspects of the disease. So here are my objectives for this afternoon. So describe the etiology of the common STIs. Again, kasi nga marami sila, but I'll be focusing on common STIs only. The pathogenesis of the disease, what are the manifestations, how to diagnose it, treatment, and of course, preventive measures. Okay, so sexually transmitted diseases, or we call it now as sexually transmitted infections, refers to a variety of clinical syndromes and infections caused by pathogens that can be acquired and transmitted only through sexual activity. That's why it's STI. So the only mode of transmission is via sexual. And it is a clinical syndrome, so meaning it's a spectrum of signs and symptoms. So being a syndrome, there are different classes, okay? So there are different um, syndromes of sexually transmitted infection divided into those, uh, urethritis or cervicitis. So these are the common um, urethral and cervical discharge. So under it are your gonococcal and non-gonococcal urethritis and cervicitis, or what we commonly know as tulo, diba? Sa Tagalog. And then another syndrome, uh, clinical syndrome of STI is your vaginal discharge. So under it are three. So you have your bacterial vaginosis or BV, trichomoniasis, and vulvovaginal candidiasis. And the last are your genital, anal, or perianal ulcers. So common under this uh, syndrome is your syphilis. Okay, so your genital syphilis, chancroid. So other um, genital ulcers, your chancroid, HS, uh, chancroid donovanosis, LGV are not that common, but is under that syndrome. So HSV, genital HSV, herpes simplex virus, is one of the common um, STI also under the genital ulcer syndrome. Okay, so just a brief background about these STIs, of course. It's common among um, teenagers, young adults, because of their um, nature. So they are high-risk populations because they are sexually active group of people. So they are the ones that engage into um, sexually active, so multiple sexual partners or have unprotected sexual intercourse. Thus, they are more at risk for having these STIs. Okay, so let's discuss the individual uh, syndromes. So starting with your urethral and your cervica, cervicitis, your urethritis and your cervicitis. So itis meaning inflammation. So urethritis is inflammation of the urethra. Okay, so the common symptoms are dysuria. So you have pain on urination, pruritus, okay, makate, and then the more commonly seen in the clinic, so mucoid or mucopurulent or purulent discharge. So gonococcal urethritis or even your non-gonococcal urethritis, one of the um, easily uh, diagnosed based on clinical manifestation. Because when a doctor sees this um, urethral or uh, mucoid or mucopurulent discharge, urethral discharge, somehow um, clinical um, diagnosis is very um, so the clinical diagnosis of that is uh, very high. So the reliability of the clinical diagnosis is very high. Okay. So again, the most commonly common etiology are your, we have your GU, gonococcal urethritis, secondary to Neisseria gonorrhea. But there are also non-gonococcal causes of the urethritis. So they are coming from chlamydia trachomatis and your mycoplasma genitalium. So we classify it as GU or your gonococcal urethritis and your NGU or your non-gonococcal urethritis. Okay, so there is a criteria in diagnosing uh, urethritis. Again, first is your 
presence of mucoid or mucopurulent or purulent discharge. So pag may nagkonsulta sa inyo dito, lalaki or babae na may yellowish discharge, usually seen sa uh, uh, andis nila sa pant or sa brief, okay, somehow you have to suspect of um, urethritis. And then you can send specimen of the urethral discharge and send it for gram stain. And uh, gram stain of the urethral secretion, you should look for greater than or equal to W, greater than or equal to 2 WBC per oil immersion field. Okay. Pero again, nga, sometimes for practicality, okay, um, hindi na nagagawa itong mga laboratory test. Kasi clinical pa lang, you can diagnose it already. But theoretically, you can send this specimen for more definitive diagnosis. So aside from gram stain, you can also send for leukocyte esterase test on the urine. And again, check for microscope examination, demonstrating greater than or equal to 10 WBC per high power flex. So this is the diagnostic criteria for urethritis. Cervicitis naman, almost the same with urethritis. It's only that it's coming from the cervical area, cervix. So same etiologic agent. So you have your gonococcal cervicitis from coming from a seer gonorrhea and the non-gonococcal cervicitis most common is your chlamydia trachomatis. So si Neisseria tsaka si chlamydia almost always daw magkasama parati as cause of your urethritis and cervicitis. So diagnosis of your cervicitis again presence of purulent or mucopurulent discharge okay visible in in the endocervical canal or an endocervical swab specimen. And sometimes patient might present also with bleeding induced by um, passage of cotton swab through the cervical os. Okay, so that's for cervicitis. So let's discuss the etiologic agent. For gonococcal urethritis cervicitis, again, the etiologic agent is your Neisseria gonorrhea. For the Neisseria species, there are only two pathogenic Neisseria for humans. The other one is the um, N meningitis, which causes your meningococcemia. So, kahit na magkapatid si Neisseria gonorrhea and Neisseria meningitis, they have two different um, clinical manifestations or causing two different diseases. So, that's why it's very important to identify the species. Of course, if it's sexual, it pertains to the Neisseria gonorrhea species. Sige. So, the most common presentation, as I've said, for men is mucopurulent discharge. For women, they might also present with discharge, but majority of women are asymptomatic. And what's the impact of this? So, women can be asymptomatic carrier of N. gonorrhea. So, yun lang yun. So, kapag asymptomatic, they do not have symptoms, they do not consult doctor. So, sometimes for transmission and also so they are more prone for complications kasi hindi sila nagagamot. So just a brief background of Neisseria gonorrhea. It's a fastidious organism, meaning it's a delicate organism. And it is an exclusive human pathogen. So wala, hindi siya makita sa animal. So this is the, nakita niyo po ba? So this is the gram stain of a urethral discharge. So you can see a gram negative intracellular or an extracellular diplococcus. So yan ang uh, usual presentation niya. So when you have clinical presentation of a patient with urethral discharge plus this gram stain of the urethral discharge showing gram negative intracellular diplococcus, actually it's considered as a um, definitive diagnosis for gonorrhea already. But there are available um, culture media that can support, can um, definitively support diagnosis of N. gonorrhea. So, pwede siyang culture with this um, specific media. Okay, so yan yung um, characteristic gross morphology of the organism. So, this is just to differentiate the two important species of your Neisseria. So, to differentiate Neisseria gonorrhea from Neisseria meningitis, which has two different presentations, very important to perform this biochemical test. So, kailangan malaman na this is Neisseria gonorrhea kasi it's, uh, it has an entirely different management with that of Neisseria meningitis. Sige. So the other cause of your urethritis, the non-gonococcal cause of urethritis is mainly secondary to chlamydia trachomatis. So um, 
we classify it nga yun as GU or your non NGU non gonococcal urethritis but most common for non gonococcal urethritis is your chlamydia so chlamydia trachomatis is also an uh, bacteria it's an obligate intracellular bacteria and it can be uh, diagnosed via culture, but we usually use your NAATS or your nucleic acid amplification test. So just like your gonorrhea, your, the sexual partner of the patient with um, non-gonococcal urethritis or cervicitis should also be referred for evaluation, testing, and for possible treatment if they had contact for the past 60 days for the patients you're treating with um, urethritis. Okay, so gram-negative bacteria, cyclamidia trachomatis. So there are different clinical important chlamydia spe species, but the ones associated with your STI is the chlamydia trachomatis. Kasi merong chlamydia pneumoniae, which causes um, respiratory infection. So iba, iba naman yun. So chlamydia trachomatis can cause non-gonococcal urethritis, epididymitis, pro proctatitis, for female urethritis, cervicitis, and if not properly treated, um, PID or proctitis or proctocolitis. So aside from urethritis and cervicitis, so um, your chlamydia trachomatis can cause your um, genital ulcer, particularly your LGV, your lymphogranuloma venereum. So this is also a sexually transmitted disease secondary to chlamydia trachomatis. The usual presentation naman to, so si gonorrhea and yung chlamydia trachomatis causing urethritis under siya sa urethritis and cervicitis syndrome. So si LGV, it's under the genital, anal, and perianal ulcer or lesion syndrome of your STI. Okay. The usual presentation ni lymphogranuloma venereum, although it's also secondary to chlamydia trachomatis, is this superlative inguinal adenitis. Okay, and then you also have papule or vesicle on the uh, genital area that can ulcerate, but uh, sometimes or usually it remains unnoticed and then heals in few days. Okay, so the regional lymph nodes enlarge and tend to become matted and painful. That's one of the characteristic of your LGV. But honestly, um, I don't know, hindi gaanong ka frequent, wala pa akong nakikita ang LGV sa practice. I don't know kay Dr. Rakit. So wala pa akong, uh, I haven't seen lymphogranuloma venereum in the clinic. So yeah, I've discussed this. Can affect both male and female. Okay, so you have inguinal nodes and perirectal nodes also among people. Okay, so th that's for the um, urethritis cervicitis syndrome. Naisingit ko lang si LGV, but LGV is under the um, anal, perianal, and genital uh, ulcers. Okay, let's go to the second um, syndrome, which are your vaginal discharge. Okay, so STD-related vaginal discharge, you have abnormal in other color and amount. And usually accompanied by prorito, swelling, dysuria, or lower abdominal or back pain. So ano ano yung mga um, etiologic agent of your vaginal discharge? So there are only three. So you have your bacterial vaginosis. So bacterial vaginosis caused by your Gardnerella vaginalis. Your trichomoniasis caused by Trichomonas vaginalis, which is a protozoan. And your vulvovaginal vulvovaginal candidiasis caused by fungi candida. So let's discuss first BV or your bacterial vagina, vaginosis. So of all the vaginal discharge um, syndrome, this is the most common cause of adult vaginitis. So this is a polymicrobial clinical syndrome. The usual uh, pathogenesis or cause of your vac bacterial vaginosis is that they attribute this uh, secondary to the alteration of the vaginal flora with little inflammation. So diba, um, in the vagina, okay, so part of the normal flora in the vagina is the lactobacilli. However, when there is alteration in this vaginal flora, there will be an overgrowth of other organisms like your Gardnerella vaginalis, anaerobes, and mycoplasma hominis, leading to your bacterial vaginosis. Okay, so, so routine treatment of sex partners is not recommended for bacterial vaginosis. Kasi nga, um, they don't classify this strictly as STI 
unlike your trichomoniasis and your vulvovaginal candidiasis because of the rationale, the pathophysiology that it is secondary only to the alteration of the vaginal flora. So hindi recommended to treat sex partners. So it can be um, diagnosed using this criteria. So you have this criteria, presence of homogeneous thin white discharge that coats the vaginal wall. So when your patient complains of a thin white discharge, and we also examine this vaginal discharge and look for clue cells. So again po yung mga examples ng clue cells. So clue cells are epithelial cells, vaginal epithelial cells containing the Gardnerella. And then you have an alkaline pH of the vagina, so more than 4.5. Diba? Usually acidic ang pH ng uh, va vagina, but um, alkaline pH facilitates the growth of your Gardnerella that can lead to bacterial vaginosis. Lastly, you have fishy odor of the vaginal discharge and a positive whiff test or um, fishy odor upon addition of 10% KOH. So when you examine the vaginal discharge, you add 10% KOH and you had a fishy odor that's a positive whiff test and it pertains to your bacterial vaginosis or your BV. Okay? So that's for your bacterial vaginosis. So another vaginal discharge, you have your trichomoniasis. Okay, so 7 to 35% of women of um, vaginal discharge is comprised by your trichomoniasis. So ito, unlike your BV, which is medyo hindi pa clear-cut na STI, si trichomoniasis is mainly sexual talaga. And um, you need to treat the partner of patient with trichomoniasis. So it is caused by the protozoa, yung kilala nyo pa ba si trichomonas vaginalis. So, hindi siya bacteria. So, it's a protozoan, per shape protozoan, and it is the etiologic agent of your trichomonas vaginal, trichomonas, trichomoniasis. So, what's the presentation of your trichomoniasis? So, majority, you have a frothy vaginal discharge. I don't know if you can see the picture. So, 12 to 36 percent, you have frothy discharge, and only 10 percent yellow to green. So, Patognomonic also of your trichomoniasis is the presence of strawberry cervix. Or when you see, when you examine the cervix, you have punctate mucosal hemorrhages. Okay, and also common to have um, itchiness, pruritus, vulvar erythema, so namumula, or dyspareunia, or pain on sexual contact. Okay, so 10 to 50 percent, just like pag female, di ba, sa um, gonorrhea rin, majority of women are asymptomatic. So 10 to 50% of women can be a symptomatic carrier of your trichomonas. Okay, so only 50% will have symptoms. Okay, okay. So this is for trichomoniasis. So again, most common presentation is frothy discharge. You have strawberry cervix also. So what's how do we diagnose trichomoniasis? So you can send for NAAT also nucleic acid amplification test or just a wet mount. Okay, so since this is a protozoan, you just submit the vaginal discharge and um, do a wet mount and look for the presence of trichomonas. There can be also culture, but it's 75 to 96 percent sensitive only. So lastly, for your vaginal discharge, you have your candidiasis, vulvovaginal candidiasis. Okay, so it's caused by candida albicans, which is a fungi in 85 to 90% of the time. Okay, so who are at risk? Pregnant, diabetics, those uh, on um, immunocom immunosuppressants or steroids, antibiotics. And sometimes they associate it with tight-fitting underclothing. So what's the presentation of vulvovaginal candidiasis? Prorito, so makati. And then you have vaginal discharge, which is whitish or curd-like. So yung tatlong, um, you can distinguish the three etiologic agent of the vaginal discharge based on their presentation. Diba si BV, medyo thin, homogenous lang. Si trichomonas, frothy. Si vulvovaginal candidiasis, whitish, curd-like. Yan, parang yung napanis na milk, no? White is curd like. So, other manifestations, you have vulvar erythema also and edema and scaling, which is very common 
for candidal infection, soreness, again, dyspareunia, and dysuria. Okay, so you can um, diagnose it by doing KOH mount and looking for um, candida. So candida is a pseudohyphae, so you have this um, characteristic on the KOH mount of your candida. You can also culture the candida using saborods or other media. Okay, so that's for vaginal um, discharge. So we've discussed so far. Um, urethritis and cervicitis, and then vaginal discharge. Lastly, we have the uh, genital anal or perianal ulcer. So I've decided to discuss only the common genital anal or perianal ulcer aside from the LGV na na mention ko uh, kanina because um, siya, it's also caused by um, chlamydia trachomatis. So I will just be discussing syphilis here as the representative um, disease under the genital anal or perianal ulcer. But there are other um, diseases under this syndrome, like your genital HSV, yun nga, yung donovanosis, okay, chancroid, but I'll be discussing syphilis only due to a lack of time. So syphilis, Okay, it's transmitted sexually, but can also be, you can also have vertical transmission. Most contagious to sex partners during the primary and secondary stage of the disease. So later on, I'll be discussing the different stages of syphilis. So its etiologic agent is a spirochete called your treponema pallidum, subspecies pallidum, because there are different species of your treponema pallidum. So Kapatid niya, it's a spirochete. So kapatid ni na lepto, okay, ni na borelia. But for syphilis, it's specifically caused by treponema pallidum. So it's a uh, spirochete corkscrew-shaped um, bacteria. It cannot be cultured in vitro and can only be seen under the dark microscope. Okay, so this is the picture of your T-pallidum under electron photomicrograph. So it's a spirochete. So you have this corkscrew um, structure. Okay. So under dark field microscope, parehas lang siya ng leptospires. Kasi kapatid niya, kap kapareho siya spirochete din. So you have this picture of your treponema pallidum. So it enters the body via the skin and mucous membrane through abrasions during sexual contact but then again can also be transmitted via transplacentally. So it can travel to the lymphatic system, to regional lymph nodes, and then throughout the body via the blood. And aside from the genital area, it can also disseminate to other parts of the body, like your CNS. That's why you also have um, neurosyphilis. So what are the manifestations? As I've said, there are different stages of your syphilis. So you have your primary syphilis, which is the first stage, which usually occurs around two to three weeks after the entry of the spirochete into the body. So you have primary syphilis. Then if you have dissemination, blood-borne dissemination, you can have the secondary syphilis, secondary stage. It can go on latent stage, so latent stage, so no manifestation. So, si latent syphilis uh, varied and time niya, so around 2 to 20 years. And then it can also, um, if the immune system of the person becomes weak, okay, so it can go to tertiary syphilis or the complicated syphilis. Otherwise, um, kung okay naman immune system, it can have no recurrence and can be declared as cure. So let's discuss the primary syphilis. So primary syphilis, again, two to three weeks upon entry of the spirochete of the treponym. So the primary manif manifestation is a primary lesion or what we call a chancre. Okay, so kaya siya under the genital, anal, perianal um, ulcer category of the STI. So yan yung primary manifestation niya, chancre, which develops at the site of the inoculation. So it can be macule to papule or can ulcerate. So it is usually painless, kaya hindi gaano napapansin ng patient. Eh. So painless, indurated, and has a clean base and can heal spontaneously within one to six weeks. Okay. Sometimes you can have lymphadenopathy, which is rubbery, but again, painless ulit. Okay. Unlike yung other genital ulcers like your LGV or your donovanosis, which is painful, see chancre, Painless lang siya. Okay? 
you can request for serologic tests for syphilis, but may not be positive during the primary syphilis period. Okay, so this is the picture of your chancre. So you have penile chancre, but you can also have ayan, penile chancre, but you can also have labial, okay, so labial chancre for females, and even perianal chancre. Okay, so hindi masakit, just a macular or papular lesion na hindi gaano napapansin. Okay, so it's usually um, differentiated from chancroid, which is another um, genital ulcer, but is caused by um, another etiologic agent, your hemophilus ducrii. So the main difference is that si chancroid is painful, but it's not um, really common to see chancroid. Ako, hindi pa nakakita ng chancroid as compared to your primary syphilis or your chancre. Okay, sometimes you can also have primary syphilis sa tang for those who do um, oral sex. So after primary, you can have secondary syphilis. So it occurs three to six weeks after the primary chancre appears and may persist for weeks to months. Okay, so um, the only manifestation of your secondary syphilis is that you have your rash. In 75 to 100% of the time, you have um, rash all over your body, but particularly on your palms and on your soles. Okay, so you also have lymphadenopathy, males, mucous patches. Condyloma talata is another um, clinical feature which is associated only with secondary syphilis. So when you have condyloma talata, it pertains to secondary syphilis. So when you do serologic tests during the secondary syphilis, this is the period or the stage of the disease when, wherein you have the highest titer. So teaming si, um, treponemes during the secondary stage. That's why uh, people, uh, patients on secondary syphilis are the most um, infectious of all the stages. So yan yung manifestations in secondary syphilis, primarily rashes in 75 to 100% of the time. So you have palmar and then um, uh, plantar rash. Okay, so they are very contagious when you have this secondary syphilis. So this is the condyloma talata that can be seen during the secondary stage of the disease. Okay, condyloma talata. Then this um, other um, skin lesions, usually skin lesions and presentation. Alopecia can also be manifested during secondary syphilis. Next, you have your latent syphilis. Okay, so minsan, di ba nga, pag hindi napansin si primary syphilis and then your secondary syphilis, not all will present naman with rashes eh. So na hindi napapansin. So you can go on to latent syphilis without knowing that for the past year, you're having treponyms already on your, inside your body. So pag latent syphilis, syphilis, the host suppresses the infection enough so that you do not have clinical manifestations. So the diagnosis on, is only based on the serologic. So usually, ito yung mga nakikita namin na nagpapascreen, di ba? Yung nagpapaclear. Okay, when you request for treponema blood test, positive sila but without any clinical manifestation. So we label them or we diagnose them as latent syphilis. So latent syphilis can be categorized as early latent if you're, you can be sure that it's less than one year or late latent if it's more than one year. Pero some, most of the time, hindi naman napapansin eh. Kaya ang diagnosis namin is late latent syphilis. Kasi kung hindi nila alam kung kailan nagsimula, basta nakita lang sa blood test. So that's latent syphilis. Neurosyphilis is a complication of uh, the primary syphilis or untreated secondary syphilis. And it involves the... Um, CNS, kaya nga neurosyphilis. Okay? So it can occur few months to few years after infection. That's early neurosyphilis or decades after infection. So initially, patient can be asymptomatic until magmanifest na lang siya. So you have to work up the patient for this one. Okay? Sige. So lastly, the last stage is your late syphilis or your tertiary syphilis. So approximately 30% of untreated. That's why Yung latent syphilis, kung wala pa talaga silang na-receive na treatment, it's very important that you treat them because to prevent um, 
occurrence of your complication or your tertiary syphilis, which is usually the manifestation is gammatous lesions or your cardiovascular syphilis. So gomas or gammas pertains to unilateral isolated single or disseminated lesions that can be seen in the skin, deeper tissue, and can be nodules. Okay, You have central necrosis, deep ulcers. So it's a um, skin manifestation. You can have this serpiginous gomatous lesion on the forearm or can be as severe as this ulcerating gomas gamas. So another complication of your tertiary syphilis is the involvement of the heart. So that's cardiovascular syphilis. So I will not discuss this in detail, but just to say that if not properly treated, you can have this complication. Okay, so all of these are the manifestations, but how do we diagnose syphilis? Okay, so based on clinical history, particularly if you catch the patient on primary or secondary syphilis, mas madaling ma-diagnose, diba? Because they have the presentation of chancre if it's primary syphilis or the rashes if it's secondary syphilis, accompanied with the proper clinical history. This physical examination then um, complete clinical history. However, when the patient presented with latent syphilis, so asymptomatic, then there are laboratory diagnostic tests available. Okay? So, that's history. PE, what are the different diagnostic tests? Serologic tests for treponema pallidum. So, there are two types of serologic tests. You have your non-treponemal test, which is not specific for your Syphilis, so this is your VDRL or your RPR or your EIA. Minsan kasi wala na yung RPR, VDRL, ELISA na lang. And the confirmatory test is your treponemal test, which is your uh, fluorescent treponemal antibody test. Okay? Or, um, yan, so direct fluorescent antibody tipalidum, DFA or TP. Okay? Sige. Uh, so, ito na, microscopy. So, this is the... Um, Specific, the treponemal test, your direct fluorescent antibody test. Okay, so, so, okay, ito muna. Non-treponemal, so you have here your VDRL or your RPR. So, this is the initial screening, but since it's non-treponemal nga, it's not confirmatory for um, T. pallidum. So, we usually request for RPR or VDRL, not for confirmation, but for monitoring only. So we do quantitative VDRL and RPR for monitoring the titers of the patient. Okay, so these are the advantages and the disadvantages of VDRL and RPR. The more specific or the confirmatory is the treponemal serologic test. As I've said, you have your F-tabs or your um, treponemal pallidum, okay? Um, TPPA and your enzyme immunoassay test, treponemal serologic test. So this is um, specific for uh, syphilis. So once you have it, it's confirmatory. Okay, so these are just some of the non-treponemal tests you have here, RPR. Okay, so diagnosis of latent syphilis. Yun nga. So if more than one year, so that's late latent syphilis, less than one year early latent syphilis. Syphilis. So those are the two serologic tests that we request for diagnosing syphilis. How do we manage? So it depends on the stage of the patient. That's why it's very important to determine if it's primary, secondary, or latent. If it's primary, secondary, secondary, and early latent, this is the dose. You give one dose only of benzatine penicillin G, 2.4 million units, single dose. Okay, if pen allergic, then you can give doxy or tetra. However, when you have late latent syphilis, okay, so you have to give it for three doses at one week interval. So 2.4 million units per week and then for three doses. Okay. That's why it's very important to know kung late latent or early latent syphilis. Pero yun nga, since hindi naman namin na usually na-diagnose ang early latent, tinitreat namin sila as late latent syphilis. When you have tertiary syphilis, it's a different management because you have to admit the patient ah, without neurologic involvement, three doses pa rin. But with neurosyphilis, okay, and then the other complications like cardiovascular or gomatous syphilis, then you have to admit the patient and give this um, 
aqueous crystalline penicillin G, 18 to 24 million units per day. So 3 to 4 million units every 4 hours for around 10 to 14 days. So it requires admission for you to manage neurosyphilis. For pregnant, uh, so similar with that of non-pregnant, you treat it according to um, the stage of the patient, whether it's primary, secondary, or tertiary. So I just want to mention here that um, when you give penicillin in a patient with treponem or spirochetal infection, we have to watch out for the side effect, your Jarek-Herxheimer reaction, which is um, actually self-limiting, but um, it's important that we are aware of this um, adverse reaction secondary to uh, treatment with penicillin with that of spirochetal infection. Okay, so follow up. So you have to re examine the patient after uh, management six to 12 months and then follow up the titer. So, particularly your um, RPR, as I've said, quantitative RPR and VDRL. So you can re examine at six, 12, 18, and 24 months. For HIV infected patients, made you more frequent than the usual than the non HIV. So you have to examine three, six, nine, and 12 months after. And then if you're treating latent syphilis, 6, 12, 18, and 24 months. So pag neurosyphilis, serologic testing also. So you have to follow up. And then repeat CSF examination, six months interval until it becomes normal. Okay. So when there are treatment failures, okay, so treatment failure pertains to persistent or recurring clinical signs, hindi nag improve So persistently increasing titer of RPR despite of treatment. So you have to retreat and reevaluate for HIV infection. Okay, we should not forget patient counseling, the nature of the disease, how is it transmitted, the importance of treatment and follow-up, and some of the risk reduction measures. Okay, so... Patients, partners of the patients with syphilis should also be monitored. So for sex partners of patients with primary, secondary, secondary or early latent syphilis, treat, treat presumptively as for a early syphilis at the time of examination unless the non-treponemal test is known and it was negative or the last sexual contact was more than 90 days. So if you're sure, then you, cannot, you may not treat the partner of the patient. Okay, so that's my last slide. 